Hello my dear students how are you a very good evening to all of you so i hope you all are understanding this animal kingdom right i have started this animal kingdom specially for class 11 student because they find it very difficult to understand animal kingdom to remember all these new terms which they are coming across right so uh, in this session in today's session we are going to talk about more three more phylums that is platyhelminthes ascalminthes and annelida before that we have completed already three phylums before that porifera celentrata and tenophora right so i hope you have understood those three phylums before that we have already discussed the basis of classification which is very very important part for whole animal kingdom in every class we talk about in every phylum of animal kingdom we talk about the general features which we have discussed in the basis of classification all right so basis of classification is very very important part beta and you have to remember all those features for every phylum all right that is the most important part in animal kingdom then you will find all the phylums you will find they are very easy if you will remember the basis of classification throughout all the phylums right so as we have already discussed porifera celentrata tenophora if you remember then you can please tell me in the comments what do you remember about porifera i have told you in porifera they have numerous pores on their body right i have told you that they have a cavity known as spongocele i have told you ostia through ostia water enters it comes into the spongocele then it goes out right through the osculum so we have talked about the pores that is why they are known as sponges beta and i have told you that spongocele and the canals are lined by the speci specialized cell which is named as which is named as collar cell or coanocytes right so you have to remember all all those important things in porifera then there are we have talked about its physiology also we have talked about its body wall and the characteristic feature that is water transport or water canal system that you don't have to remember uh, that you don't have to forget you have to remember that right then uh, after uh, porifera we have talked about celentrates porifera also celentrates also they are uh, found in the uh, aquatic uh, all right they are aquatic they are found in the water medium and they are mostly marine both of them but we have talked that uh, porifera are all are sessile but celentrates they are they can be sessile or free swimming but when we have talked about tenophora they are exclusively marine you cannot see any fresh water form that was the important feature of phylum tenophora right in celentrata we have seen the gastrovascular cavity celenteron we have seen nidoblast nidoblast we have seen on their body surface and on the tentacles and these nidoblast are helping in the capture of prey defense anchorage right so we have talked about nidoblast so what is important in porifera water uh, water canal system or water transport system it is not water vascular system in echinodermata there is water vascular system right then the important thing in celentrata is the nidoblast and the celenteron right the important thing in tenophora is they are exclusively marine what else is important they show bioluminescence the living organism is emitting light all right so whenever the phylum comes in your mind then its characteristic feature should also come along with that so similarly today we are talking about we will talk about platyhelminthes ascalminthes and annelida let me tell you a little bit about them whenever you will see platyhelminthes they are flat worms they are flat okay just like this is not flat just like this phone this is also flat kind of flat right so uh, flat worms are basically dorso ventrally flattened so they are flat worms ascalminthes they are round worms and annelids they are segmented worms so this thing should come into your mind first when we talk about when we talk about platyhelminthes ascalminthes and annelida 
प्लेटीहेलमिथीज आर फ्लैट वॉर्म्स बेटा फ्लैट वॉर्म्स ऑल राइट दे आर डॉर्सो वेंट्रली फ्लैट एंड एस्किलमिथीज दे आर राउंड वॉर्म्स दे आर जस्ट लाइक दिस पेन दिस पेन इज राउंड इन क्रोस सेक्शन इफ आई विल कट इट सो देन यू विल गेट अ राउंड क्रोस सेक्शन सर्कुलर क्रोस सेक्शन सो दे आर राउंड वॉर्म्स ऑल राइट एंड एनेलेट्स दे आर सेगमेंटेड वॉर्म्स दिस इज द फाइलम इन विच फर्स्ट टाइम वी हैव सीन सेगमेंटेशन ट्रू सेगमेंटेशन दैट इज नोन एज मेटा मेरिजम राइट सो दे आर सेगमेंटेड वॉर्म्स सेगमेंटेड वॉर्म्स सो बेसिकली दे ऑल आर वॉर्म्स वॉर्म्स हियर इट इज वॉर्म्स नॉट वर्ड्स वॉर्म्स राइट फ्लैट वॉर्म्स सो टूडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल द वॉर्म्स flat worms round worms and segmented worms right so let's start with the phylum platyhelminthes i just now told you that they are known as flat worms right so let's write it down they are known as flat worms everyone commonly known as flat worms why they are commonly known as flat worms as they have as they have dorso ventrally dorso ventrally flattened body dorso ventrally flattened body all right they are flat they are flat you can see this they are flat flat you understand just like a coin flat just like this phone flat all right so basically that is why they are known as flat worms this is the first point then if we talk about their habit and habitat and dorso ventrally you must be understanding dorso ventrally what is the ventral uh, uh, side of mine you can see me right from the ventral side now you can see me from the ventral side so the front side is the ventral side and the back side is the dorsal side so from both the sides they are flat from both the sides they are flat that is the meaning of dorso ventrally flattened all right coming to the habit and habitat they are mostly parasitic beta and they are mostly endoparasites endoparasites means they are living inside the body of the host right so what is the habit and habitat they are mostly endoparasites they are mostly endoparasites endoparasites means lives inside the host lives inside the host they cannot complete their life cycle without the another animal which we are calling as host what is host host is the another animal in which they are living right so they are mostly endoparasites so rest of them rest of them will be free living mostly endoparasites and some are free living some are free living so beta there is a difference between free swimming and free living right free swimming i have told you sessile and free swimming sessile means it is attached to a substratum free living uh, sorry free swimming it is freely swimming in water it can move from one place to another place but if we talk about free living that means it is not dependent upon the host right it is not dependent upon the host it can live without host endoparasites or parasites they cannot live without host but free living can live without host example is planaria 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 is a free living uh, form here free living flat worm here right coming to the general features which we have talked about in basis of classification so you know about the level of organization in them please tell me in the comments what is the level of organization so first time we have seen the formation of organs in them you will find so many new things in phylum platyhelminthes organ organ level of organ level of organization is seen in this phylum right this is the first point then if we talk about the germ layers three germ layers triploblastic they are triploblastic beta before this the two phylums were diploblastic the first time they are triploblastic animals then but they don't have coelom so they are acoelomates they are still acoelomates this has not changed in them they are still acoelomates then if we talk about 
uh, their uh, body plan they have blind sack body plan they have blind sack body plan if we talk about their symmetry beta so then again first time we have seen bilateral symmetry in them bilateral symmetry so these are the general features of phylum platyhelminthes so i hope you have understood the common name the habit and habitat the general features all right now coming to the physiology of flatworms if we talk about physiology first of all we are talking about the digestive system so they, there is blind sac body plan that means incomplete digestive system incomplete elementary canal incomplete elementary canal right then i have told you in the previous phylums what we have discussed about the digestion porifera exclusively intracellular you will not find extracellular digestion in them then if we talk about coelenterata and tenophora first there is extracellular digestion then there is intracellular digestion but here comes extracellular digestion all right here comes extracellular digestion but if we talk about parasitic forms beta if we talk about parasitic forms they are velovers what is velovers velovers means they are just absorbing the pre digested food because they are parasites they are living in the host body host is doing the function of digestion of food parasite is dependent upon the host right so parasite is going to absorb the food directly from the host it is not going to digest the food and also in them there is no digestive system there is the digestive the elementary canal is absent in parasites but if it is present if it will be incomplete but in most of the parasites there will be no elementary canal and they are velovers that means they absorbs the pre digested food they absorb the pre digested food all right coming to the respiration beta they again they don't have any specific organ for respiration so they respire because most of them lives inside the body of the host so they are respiring by their, their general body surface and the parasites here they show anaerobic respiration right so they respire through general body surface and if we talk about parasites they show anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration means in absence of oxygen the respiration is taking place in absence of oxygen now coming to the circulation you know that they are triploblastic that means you know that they have ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm for the first time they are triploblastic but the cells of the mesoderm are very compactly packed in between those cells there is a fluid beta that fluid is known as parenchymal fluid right that fluid is known as parenchymal fluid so circulation here it occurs through the parenchymal fluid where this parenchymal fluid is present if we take a cross section if we take a cross section like this all right if we take a cross section so basically this is ectoderm and this is endoderm right in between ectoderm and endoderm there will be some cells like this some cells will be there like this these are the mesodermal cells they are very compactly arranged all right they are mesodermal cells so in between these cells there is a fluid beta and that fluid is known as parenchymal fluid all right so in between these cells here i can make the parenchymal fluid okay i will take this color here there will be a fluid i am making in between the cells so you have to understand that this is the parenchymal fluid through which the circulation will take place all right so the pink colored one is parenchymal fluid 
parenchymal fluid. I hope this color is visible to all of you. All right. Yeah, I think it is visible. So, parenchymal fluid. So, circulation occurs through the parenchymal fluid. You can see where the parenchymal fluid is present in the mesoderm, right? Then, if we talk about the excretion, if we talk about the excretion, then excretion takes place through a very, very special cell in their body because they have organ level of organization, right? So, this is doing the function of organ level of organization came into this phylum. Uh, but organ systems are not developed. So, there is a specialized cell here which is functioning for the removal of metabolic waste and the metabolic waste is ammonia. So, their excretion is done by the flame cells, very very important cells, flame cells, alright. These flame cells are also known as solenocytes. These flame cells are also known as solenocytes or they are also known as protonephridia beta, protonephridia. They are not only doing the function of excretion, they are also doing the function of osmoregulation. So, excretion and osmoregulation. What do you understand by osmoregulation? There is a balance in our body, balance of electrolytes and water, alright, balance of salt and water. So, that balance is maintained, it is also maintained by these flame cells. So, that is why the function of flame cells is excretion as well as osmoregulation and you can also write that they are ammonotelic. So, that means which metabolic waste is getting removed, ammonia is getting removed. If I talk about the structure of this flame cell, so then we can understand the flame cell on another page. So, here I will talk about the flame cell. Flame cell looks like this. Flame cell looks like this. There is an excretory tube, there is an excretory pore and this is the flame cell. Alright, this is, this is the cell and this is the lumen of the cell. In this lumen, you will see some cilia beta and obviously cilia is arising from the basal granules. So, these are the basal granules and these are the cilia. These are cilia. These are cilia. Alright. So, cilia is arising from the basal granule and there are some globules which are packed with the metabolic waste. Here, these are the globules of excretion. Right. So, we can just label it with the, this color, all right. So, this is the excretory, this is the excretory pore, this is excretory tube, there are some globules you can see, these are the globules which are packed with the metabolic waste. So, they are the globules of excretion, globules of excretion. This is the lumen of the cell and these are the basal granules. Basal granule is that structure which is giving rise to cilia beta. So, these all are cilia, they are cilia. So, when the cilia is beating, it appears like flickering of flame. That is why the cell has a name flame cell. But you do not have to remember the structure of the flame cell. Alright, you just have to remember that excretion in platyhelminthes is done by flame cells. If they will tell solenocytes or protonephridia, that is also correct, right? But the important name is flame cells and they are doing excretion as well as osmoregulation. Before this, we have seen nervous control was like nervous system was very, very diffused type and very lower grade type. But now we have seen a ladder like nervous system in them, nervous control is done by the ladder like nervous system. In this ladder like nervous system, you will see double ventral nerve cord, you will see double solid ventral and ganglionated, ganglionated nerve cord, ganglionated 
nerve cord. I will show you this. I will show with the help of the, uh, the diagram. So, just like I have made the diagram of the flame cell, we can make the diagram of the ladder like nervous system. The ladder like nervous system looks like this beta. Ladder like nervous system, all right. Here, this is the nervous system. All right, this is the nervous system. In this nervous system, you can see the two nerve cords and to these nerve cords, these two nerve cords are connected by the, by these later, uh, by these transverse commissures, trans transverse commissures and there are some nerves as well. Some lateral nerves will also be there like this. Lateral nerves are also there. These are the lateral nerves. This portion is acting as a brain. These are the lateral nerves. All right. So, why I am making this diagram? This is not important. This structure is not important. But you need to understand, you need to learn. If you will see the images, then you will be able to learn in a better, make, uh, in a better way. So, now you can write this is the double ventral nerve cord. All right, this is double ventral, double ventral nerve cord, solid ganglionated nerve cord. So, you can see two nerve cords, right? So, that is why double. They are present on the ventral side, that is why, why ventral and they are ganglionated. What is the meaning of ganglionated? That means they have ganglia. What is ganglia, beta? Ganglia are the collection of or group of cell bodies of neuron. Do you know about neuron a little bit? You must have done neuron in the lower classes. You know in neuron there is a cell body, there are some cell processes like dendrites and exons, right? So, the uh, exons of the neurons are also grouping together to form nerve, alright? And the uh, cell bodies of the neurons are also grouping together to form ganglions. So, here on these nerve cords, ganglions are present double ventral nerve cord, all right. Then what are these? These are transverse commissures, transverse commissures which are connecting the two nerve cords and then you can see the lateral nerves here. These are the lateral nerves beta, lateral nerves. This is acting as a brain, this is acting as a brain here, all right. That's all. So, are you see, uh, uh, is it looking like a ladder? That is why the name of this nervous system is ladder like nervous system, right? So, what you have to exactly remember? You have to remember that excretion and osmoregulation is done by flame cells, nervous control is done by the double solid ventral ganglionated nerve cord, all right? Coming to the sensory control, they have different sensory receptors, they have different sensory receptors, <coughs> different sensory receptors they have. For example, I have told you na, statocyst, they can also have statocyst. So, that is going to be statoreceptor. I can write receptor like this. So, they have statoreceptor for the balancing. They have chemoreceptors for the chemicals like for the taste or for smell. These are chemoreceptors, right? Then uh, there can be tactile receptor for touch, tactile receptor is for touch, etc. Our skin is a tactile receptor. If somebody will touch, okay, so then we will get to know. So, we can sense the touch. That means we have tactile receptor, right? We can sense the heat and cold, right? So, we have thermoreceptors. We can sense smell, so, we have chemoreceptor in our nose, we can sense taste, that means we have chemoreceptor on our tongue, taste buds, alright, they are gustato receptors. In nose, there is chemo, there is olfactory receptor, so olfactory receptor, gustatory receptors, they are chemoreceptors. So, different types of receptors can be found in their body. If we talk about skeleton, so I have already told you parenchymal fluid, here this is only acting as skeleton beta. So, there is hydroskeleton is seen, 
hydroskeleton is that skeleton in which fluid is acting as a skeleton fluid is acting as skeleton endoskeleton so basically here the fluid is acting as a skeleton parenchymal fluid now the important part is reproduction we can see asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction here so asexual reproduction if we talk about asexual reproduction then it is seen in planaria i have given you the example of planaria right it is a free living form it is a free living flatworm it shows asexual reproduction it shows transverse binary fission beta binary fission that means it is splitting into two parts and this binary fission the plane of division is transverse plane this plane if this is the worm then this is the transverse plane right then uh, it also shows it has high power of regeneration it has high power of it has high power of regeneration this is also mentioned in ncert and it is very very important right now coming to the sexual reproduction i will tell sexual reproduction on this page all right so if we talk about if we talk about reproduction further if we talk about reproduction further so apart from asexual reproduction they show sexual reproduction sexual reproduction then what is the sexuality of the animals here the sexuality is het, uh, what is that bisexual hermaphrodite hermaphrodite they are hermaphrodite that means bisexual but there is an exception there is an exception that is schistosoma schistosoma is beta blood fluke it is blood fluke and it is unisexual it is not hermaphrodite it is unisexual so this is one important thing you have to remember then coming to the fertilization see they are parasites and you should know that parasites if they will show external fertilization then they uh, the, in the external fertilization outside the body only the next stage will be formed the fertilization the, the zygote will be formed after fertilization right so there are more chances if they lives inside the body of the host so that means the host digestive juices can act on those uh, zygote or the further stages after the zygote larva will be getting formed in the parasite parasites right so uh, basically external fertilization is not is harmful for them it is disadvantageous for them so that is why they prefer internal fertilization they have evolved like this so they have internal fertilization so internal fertilization is seen because most of them are parasites and if we talk about development beta then mostly indirect development only so you can write indirect development indirect development in case of parasites but in case of but in case of free living forms direct development can also be seen but if they will ask only one then you have to tell indirect right because most of them are parasitic so direct development is seen in free living forms free living forms so we are done with most of the things of platyhelminthes now coming to the parasitic adaptations beta so how you can understand parasitic adaptations if you will remember that there are tapeworms there are uh, there are trematodes trematodes are flukes and there are free living forms so there is a class known as cystoda we don't have really do the uh, we don't have to do the classification why i am telling you this because there are three different types of animals or worms here one type of worms is cystoda tape worms cystoda are tape worms trematodes are flukes in trematoda we will see flukes and both of these are parasites beta both of these are parasites so they are showing 
parasitic adaptations that is why here i have written parasitic adaptations but the last class is turbularia in which free living forms are there this is a free this is a class of free living forms example i have already given planaria all right so here we will be writing the examples of cystoda as well as trematoda so with this we will be completing the phylum platyhelminthes we need to know the examples we need to know the parasitic adaptations so now now first parasitic adaptation can be they have thick tegument what is tegument beta tegument is your skin or integument it will be good if you'll write integument integument right thick integument to prevent to prevent themselves to prevent from digestive juices of the host digestive juices of the host right then next parasitic adaptation can be spines or scales all right spines or scales to penetrate into the host body so they have spines or scales to penetrate host body then they have important structures beta hooks and suckers they have important structures hooks and suckers to get attached to get attached to the host body surface host body surface right now another parasitic adaptation is digestive system is absent digestive system is absent then then you can write they reproduce through they reproduce through larval stages larval stages this is also a parasitic adaptation so that is why i have written in reproduction i have written indirect development in seen in, is seen in parasites they have evolved like that and direct development is seen in free living forms right so thick tegument spines or scales hooks and suckers digestive juices is absent uh, sorry digestive system is absent reproduce through the larval stages all these are the parasitic adaptations where you have to remember these three very well hooks and suckers that it is written in ncrt right if you'll read ncrt after after understanding this phylum then you will understand now examples all right so what are the examples of cestoda class examples of cestoda class are tapeworms and you also have to remember in tapeworms there will be self fertilization self fertilization in others there will be cross fertilization but in tapeworms there is self fertilization then there is uh, tinea solium tinea solium is pig tapeworm it is pig tapeworm all right then there is tinea saginata it is known as beef tapeworm tapeworms are the parasites of small intestine of man so they lives in the small intestine of man all right and they have two host tinea solium pig why pig is coming here because after man the secondary host is pig tinea saginata why beef tapeworm is it is known as beef tapeworm right beef means the uh, meat of cattle right so cattle are cows and buffaloes so the secondary host for the beef tapeworm is cattle cow or buffalo mostly buffalo and uh, the primary host for both of these will be man human human right then uh, there is echinococcus echinococcus this is the example this is also known as dog tapeworm dog tapeworm all right so these are the examples of tapeworms beta then if we talk about the examples of flukes then there is fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica is liver fluke liver fluke 
it lives in the it uh, basically harms the liver of uh, uh, pig all right so liver fluke then there is another example that is uh, schistosoma schistosoma blood fluke blood fluke so liver fluke blood fluke these are the examples of flukes beta these are the examples of flukes pig tapeworm beef tapeworm dog dog tapeworm these are the examples of tapeworms and there is only one example of the free living form that is planaria now there is another important thing about the cestoda tapeworm tapeworm the class of tapeworms it shows it shows pseudo metamerism it shows pseudo metamerism what is pseudo metamerism you know metamerism right metamerism is segmentation but here if you will see the structure of tapeworm beta here if you will see the structure of tapeworm you will see some segments which are not present by the embryonic life these are the segments you can see and the name of the segments is proglottids proglottids what are these proglottids they are the segments all right and these proglottids there will be a periodic shedding of these proglottids periodic shedding of these proglottids so that periodic shedding is known as apolysis apolysis all right so basically pseudo metamerism is seen where in which phylum in phylum platyhelminthes we can see pseudo metamerism so what we have learnt till now in platyhelminthes let's revise in platyhelminthes we have talked about their common name flatworms their habit and habitat mostly endoparasites some are free living general features so this is important organ level for the first time triploblastic for the first time bilateral symmetry has come for the first time blind sac body plan already you have seen in previous phylums and acelomates you have already seen in previous phylums coming to the physiology what is important here excretion and osmoregulation is the most important point flame cell solenocytes or protonephridia in nervous system is also important you have to remember double solid and ventral ganglionated nerve cord then reproduction is important asexual reproduction is also seen in for example in planaria sexual reproduction is also seen okay and uh, in parasites you will see that they are hermaphrodite or bisexual there is one exception schistosoma which is unisexual internal fertilization is seen and mostly in direct development is seen and now these are the examples and you have to remember that as they they are parasites mostly they are parasites so parasitic adaptations will be seen in them so for example thick integument scales and spines hooks and sucker absence of digestive system or alimentary canal reproduction through larval stages stages then the examples you have to remember and you have to remember that tapeworms they show pseudo metamerism so i hope you have understood the phylum platyhelminthes now let's discuss about the phylum askelminthes so askelminthes are round worms just like this pen if we will cut the round worms then we will get a cross section which is circular right so that is why they are commonly known as round worms they are commonly known as round worms as they appear as they appear round in cross section round in cross section all right so aski askelminthes they are also known as nimethelminthes they are also known as nimethelminthes so whenever you will see the term nematodes then you will get confused what are these worms to which phylum they belong so nema means thread ascos means round ask ask comes from ascos ascos means round and i am telling you they are also known as nimethelminthes so 
So Nima here, Nima means thread like. So yes, they are thread like. You can see here the round worm. This is the example of Ascalmenthes round worm, Ascaris. What is the name of this animal beta? This is male Ascaris and this is female Ascaris here. This is male Ascaris and this is female Ascaris, round worm. Now coming to the habit and habitat. So again, just like flat worms, they are also mostly endoparasites. Mostly endoparasites of plants and animals. Of plants and animals. So it is not necessary that the host will be animal. It can be plant as well. And if we talk about the free living forms, so there is an example, some are free living, that means they are not dependent upon any other organism, plant or animal, for example, Rhabditis, Rhabditis, Rhabditis is a free living round worm. If we talk about the general features, so here for the first time we have seen organ system level of organization, organ system level of organization. Then uh, we already we know that they are triploblastic. So for the first time three germ layers were seen in the previous phylum platyhelminthes. They are also having three germ layers triploblastic. But for the first time coelom has appeared in them. But these, this coelom is not a true coelom beta. This coelom is false coelom. So they are pseudo coelomates. They are pseudo coelomates, right? Then they have tube within tube body plan. They have tube within tube body plan. And beta, they have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. So what is the new thing which you have observed in this phylum? The new thing which you have observed in this phylum is they are pseudo coelomates, they have tube within tube body plan and they have organ system level of organization. These are the new things which you have seen in this phylum. Right. Now if we talk about the body form, you can see the body form clearly that they are cylindrical, they are cylindrical, they are elongated elongated and tapering end, tapering at both ends, tapering means the ends are pointed, okay. For example, this pen, one end of this is pointed, both the ends when they are pointed then tapering at both ends. So you can see here, okay, what difference you are able to see here in these two figures beta? You can see this part. If you are able to see this part, this is the posterior part, this is the anterior part, right? So it has a it has a curved posterior end. The male has a curved posterior end, curved posterior end. But the female has straight posterior end. Here you cannot see any curve. So the female has straight posterior end, right? So this is the difference you can see. Another difference is this male is shorter. It is short than female and the female is longer, is longer than the male. So externally if you will see the male and female in this phylum, you can easily distinguish between the male and female and this feature is known as sexual dimorphism. Like in humans also, you can easily tell by external appearance only you can easily tell that this is a male and this is a female. Similarly, in phylum Ascalimenthes also you will see sexual dimorphism. Coming to the body wall next. If you will see the body wall beta, I will uh, roughly draw it here. So there are three layers in the body wall. So then there is an epidermis which has columnar cells like this columnar cells, these are the columnar cells. So this is epidermis, alright? This is what? This is epidermis, alright? Then 
below epidermis there is muscularis these are muscles and there are longitudinal muscles longitudinal muscles and epidermis is syncytial syncytial means there are so many so many nucleus multinucleated epidermis syncytial epidermis and then epidermis is secreting the cuticle so here this is cuticle here this is cuticle cuticle also is made up of two proteins one is keratin and one is collagen so outer there is outer there is keratin and on the inner side there will be collagen so basically this is cuticle beta and this is muscularis so how many layers are there in the body wall there are three layers in the body wall there are three layers in the body wall outermost cuticle all right outermost cuticle so in cuticle also there is a cortex outer side there is a medulla inner side in cortex you will see keratin you will see keratin protein keratin protein is also present in our hair keratin protein is also present in our skin so they also have keratin protein and medulla there is collagen protein and this cuticle is secreted by the middle layer that is epidermis so middle layer is syncytial epidermis syncytial means multinucleated syncytial epidermis is there and this secretes the cuticle it secretes cuticle beta all right then in the innermost layer there is innermost layer is muscularis muscularis is made up of longitudinal muscles longitudinal muscles so muscles they will help in the locomotion all right coming to the digestion they have complete elementary canal very very important till now we were seeing incomplete elementary canal or we were telling that digestive system is absent or in or the elementary canal is absent but here in this case there is complete elementary canal all right there is extra cellular digestion complete elementary canal means two openings will be there mouth and anus in complete elementary canal you can add one point which is given in ncert that is muscular pharynx muscular pharynx is present and this muscular pharynx is for the this muscular pharynx is for the sucking of food sucking of food so it is present near the mouth only and it helps in the sucking of food all right coming to the respiration so again respiration is taking place through general body surface through general body surface for circulation they have pseudo coelom which is filled with pseudo coelomic fluid so this pseudo coelomic fluid helps in the circulation now coming to the excretion again they are also a monotelic and uh, they have a specialized cell which is known as rennet cell rennet cell or this is also known as h shaped cell this h shaped cell is only one specialized cell which will release the uh, metabolic waste into the excretory tube it opens into excretory tube and this excretory tube will open into the excretory pore so the metabolic waste is released out by out of the body by excretory pore if we talk about nervous control then again the same double solid ventral ganglionated nerve cord is there ventral ganglionated nerve cord is there some sensory receptors are there which are known as phasmids phasmids or 
amphids amphids or pits and there are papillae so basically these papillae are are tactile receptors they are beta tactile receptors tactile means they are sensory for touch tactile receptors phasmids and amphids are chemoreceptors chemo receptors now the important point is about the reproduction so in reproduction you have to remember that they there is sexual dimorphism all right they are not hermaphrodite they are unisexual and they show mostly external fertilization development can be uh, direct or indirect mostly it is indirect right so in reproduction let's write the reproduction here in reproduction there is sexual mode of reproduction is seen sexual mode of reproduction is seen i have already talked about the sexual dimorphism in them and i have shown you the male and female ascaris there are differences in the male and female ascaris which you which you can make out by the external appearance only male has some uh, structures some copulatory organs pineal setae that is an addition additional point male has cloaca which is absent in the female but you cannot see cloaca from the outer side right all right uh, so then male and female can be distinguished externally on the basis of the uh, posterior end on the basis of the length of the body so male are short females are longer males have curved posterior end females have straight posterior end this you have to remember right sexual dimorphism is seen then sexual mode of reproduction then you can write they have <coughs> mostly external fertilization mostly external fertilization and then you can write development can be development can be indirect or direct indirect in parasitic forms and direct in parasites and or direct in free living forms direct in free living forms so this is all about the phylum ascalminthes now coming to the examples so ascaris is one example ascaris commonly known as round worm commonly known as what round worm this ascaris it causes ascariasis disease it causes the disease ascariasis all right we will talk about all these diseases in, in human health and disease chapter all right then there is an example that is uh, causing the elephantiasis filarial worm vukreria 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 is a is a filarial worm the common name is filarial worm and it causes the disease elephantiasis beta so uh, these two disease are helminthic diseases which we will study in human health and disease chapter human health and disease chapter there we will discuss elephantiasis as well as ascariasis in detail right so now we are not going to uh, not going into the details of this then another is ensilostoma ensilostoma is hookworm hookworm other examples are trichinella trichinella is trichinia worm trichinia worm all right so etc so many examples can be there but you have to remember the examples of Uh, ncrt all right so what we have discussed in ascalminthes what are the important points in ascalminthes they are round worms they are also known as nematodes or nemathelminthes they are mostly endoparasites of plants as well as animals some are free living like rhabditis organ system level of organization triploblastic pseudo coelomates tube within tube body plan bilateral symmetry they are cylindrical they are elongated they are tapering at both the ends you can see both the ends are pointed you can see the figure of the male and female ascaris and the differences between male and female ascaris then the body wall has three layers here you can see the three layers cuticle epidermis and muscularis that means we have seen muscles in them right 
before this we have not talked about the muscles right digestion you have to remember that there is a muscular pharynx you have to remember about the muscular pharynx because it is written in ncrt and the uh, and the function of muscular pharynx is sucking of food then you have to remember pseudo coelomic fluid helps in the circulation excretion is done by the rennet cells or h shaped cells so it this name is not written but excretory tube and excretory pore is written right so you have to remember that there is a cell h shaped cell which which is releasing the metabolic waste into the excretory tube nervous control is there double solid ventral ganglionated nerve cord sensory control is there there are so many sensory structures in them reproduction you have to remember sexual dimorphism that means they are unisexual obviously when sexual dimorphism is there that means they are unisexual right they are unisexual male is different female is different sexual mode of reproduction is there mostly external fertilization mostly external fertilization development can be indirect or direct depending upon the animal if it is parasitic indirect development mostly occurs these are the examples so we are done with the phylum ascelmenthes now let's talk about the phylum annelida all right again the common name of annelida annelida name comes from annulus annulus means ring annulus stands for ring so if you will see here this is nearis all right this is hirudin area leech and if you will see earthworm earthworm also belongs to this phylum only if you will see earthworm beta earthworm looks like this there are these kind of rings you will see in their body so that is why because of the presence of rings annulus ring this is a ring this is a ring right this is annulus annulus all right so now here you are seeing that they are commonly known as segmented worms they are commonly known as segmented worms first time we have seen true segmentation true metamerism is seen in them true metamerism true metamerism what is metamerism beta segmentation externally as well as internally the body is divided into segments so now they that is why they are commonly known as segmented worms the first segment is known as question comes upon this the first segment is known as first segment is known as peristomium 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 stome means mouth peris peri means around so in the first segment only mouth is present and and upon mouth there is a covering that is known as prostomium so prostomium is, is not the first segment this has already been asked in neat exam that the first segment is prostomium or peristomium so here the first segment is peristomium you don't have to get confused the first segment is peristomium so here i have the structure of earthworm if you can see here if you can see here this is the first segment peristomium and there is a structure which is covering the mouth that is prostomium it covers the mouth and peristomium is the first segment of the body first segment of the body all right so this is important now coming back so you have understood the first segment is not prostomium it is peristomium all right then habit and habitat if we talk about habit and habitat beta so they can be aquatic or terrestrial the habitat can be aquatic or terrestrial so again and again i will talk about these three only i will talk about earthworm nearis and leech hirudin area if we talk about hirudin area and if we talk about earthworm they are terrestrial earthworm 
for example earthworm it is terrestrial for example nearis it is aquatic now if we talk about habit some of them can be ectoparasites okay they some ectoparasites some ectoparasites can be there for example for example leech hirudinaria hirudinaria commonly it is known as leech so blood sucking leech it sucks the blood that is why it is an ectoparasite blood sucking leech all right so this is blood sucking leech here and this is nearis here what are these structures which you can see in the nearis beta these are lateral appendages all these are lateral appendages lateral appendages what is the name of these lateral appendages they are parapodia very very important structure i will talk about this parapodia in respiration in locomotion all right coming to the general features tell me quickly what are the general features of phylum annelida organ system level of organization has already come organ system level of organization has already come in the previous phylum but the very very important thing is and again they are also triploblastic but the important thing is they are the true coelomates they are u coelomates for the first time in this phylum we have seen the true coelom we have seen the true coelom for the first time in this phylum annelida u coelomates then then if we talk about the body plan they have they have tube within tube body plan tube within tube body plan and if we talk about the symmetry then they have bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry and i have told you that they have they show metamerism so this thing i have already told you coming to the body wall again there are three layers beta there are three layers outermost is going to be cuticle again and cuticle is secreted by the epidermis so again there will be after cuticle there will be epidermis so cuticle is secreted by epidermis all right and the cuticle is moist it is moist and slimy why it is moist and slimy because of the presence of because of glands in the epidermis these glands are present in the epidermis so the next layer is epidermis the next layer is epidermis this is made up of columnar cells columnar cells single layer of columnar cells then there is muscularis so here we will see two layers in the muscularis outer and inner outer and inner here the outer layer is made up of is made up of circular muscles beta circular muscles whereas the inner layer of muscles is longitudinal muscles longitudinal muscles so muscles are helping in the locomotion so in the previous phylum we have seen only longitudinal muscles in the muscularis in this phylum we have seen circular as well as longitudinal muscles all right so this is also mentioned in ncrt and the uh, arrangement is also mentioned outer as well as inner so you have to remember the muscularis now this is all about the body wall then coming to the physiology so in the physiology you have to remember that they have organ system level of organization so obviously complete elementary canal will be there and with this they have extra cellular digestion extra cellular digestion now coming to the respiration here respiration is important beta in case of respiration you have seen that aquatic forms are also there and terrestrial forms are also there right so in the aquatic forms the in the aquatic forms they can respire through gills 
gills will be the respiratory organ in case of terrestrial the respiration is cutaneous what is the meaning of cutaneous skin when the animal is respiring through skin then that kind of respiration is known as cutaneous respiration or through general body surface all right so here the example is nearis but but nearis nearis respires through nearis respires through general body surface through general body surface nearis being an aquatic form it does not respire through gills all right it respires how it respires through general body surface this is important in terrestrial there will be cutaneous respiration in aquatic forms i have also told you that in aquatic forms you will find parapodia so let me discuss the locomotory structures here i have already talked about parapodia i have already talked about muscles so what are the locomotory structures here the first locomotory structure is muscles the second locomotory structure is beta parapodia so here i can write that parapodia not only helps in locomotion it is also uh, it also helps in the uh, respiration all right and it is found in it is found in aquatic forms it is found in aquatic forms and it helps in respiration as well respiration as well apart from locomotion it also helps in respiration coming to the third structure beta very very important structure setae setae or they are also known as chitae they are roughly s shaped structures they are roughly s shaped structures they are roughly s shaped structures and they help in the in the locomotion so on the next page i will talk about the setae if you will see setae they are roughly s shaped structure there is a nodule and there is a uh, there is a like this there is a base so this is the nodule this is the neck and this is the base the base is present in the epidermis from the epidermis it is coming out so this is the epidermal pit this is what this is epidermal pit this is base and base is situated in the epidermal pit so where are these setae are present this is the structure of a setae and where are these setae are present they are present they are present in the middle of every segment in the middle of every segment all right if this is one segment here if this is one segment this is another segment this is another segment this is another segment so basically this is septa here where is the where is septa here this is septa which is which is separating the two segments all right and in between every segment there is a ring of setae beta so this is the ring of setae this is the ring of setae here the setae are present setae setae are present all right so uh, basically if i will see if this is a uh, annelid all right so uh, the setae are coming out like this in the every in the every segment in the middle setae will be coming like this but if we will see it like this all right if we will see the cross section like this so then then uh, this is going to be the segment and setae are coming like this setae are coming like this all right setae are coming like this so this is the ring of setae they are s shaped structures setae so they help in locomotion they help in locomotion as well as they also help in in copulation they also help in copulation how they help in copulation they as they keep two worms two worms attached 
they help to keep two worms attached during copulation as they help to keep two worms attached during copulation so this is the additional uh, function of the setae all right so i have told you locomotive structures muscles parapodia and setae and i have talked a little bit about the setae they help in copulation they help in locomotion where they are present and they are present in the form of a ring so there is a ring of setae now coming back about the circulation so if we talk about annelida first time we are seeing the circulatory system before this the circulatory system was not there no circulatory system absent here the circulatory system is present and it is closed type it is closed type that means blood vessels are present closed type circulatory system heart is also present heart is also present here and the heart is basically dorsal and neurogenic neurogenic means under the control of nervous system dorsal means it is present on the dorsal side here in us we have ventral heart and we our heart is myogenic muscles are controlling the heart the contraction and relaxation is under the control of muscles of heart but here it is under the control of nervous system neurons then exception is there and that exception is beta leech leech is the exception also there is respiratory respiratory pigment is also present in them and that is hemoglobin or erythrocruonin erythrocruonin what is this this is the respiratory pigment this is the respiratory pigment but the difference is but the difference is it is present in plasma in our body also hemoglobin is present why we are calling it as hemoglobin because it is also red in color but the structure of hemoglobin in them will be different from our hemoglobin obviously we are caudates they are non caudates they are lower uh, animals right but the difference is here the hemoglobin is present in plasma in our body hemoglobin is present in rbcs all right red blood cells talking about the excretion the excretory waste can be ammonia or urea and the excretion is done by very very important structure nephridia and here the nephridia is not proto nephridia it is meta nephridia these are the tubular structures meta nephridia they are tubular structures which help in excretion as well as again osmoregulation and osmoregulation wherever you will see nephridia proto or meta nephridia just remember they are not only doing excretion they are also doing osmoregulation all right so here meta nephridia are there and if we talk about the if we talk about the uh, metabolic waste earthworm we can take the example of earthworm earthworm in rainy season it will be ammonotelic otherwise it will be ureotelic ammonotelic during rainy season beta rainy season otherwise it is ureotelic if we talk about the nervous control nervous control is again same double solid ventral nerve cord double solid ventral nerve cord ganglionated nerve cord nerve cord different sensory structures are present for sensory control different sensory receptors are present for example statoreceptors statoreceptors all right photoreceptors chemoreceptors tactile receptors etc 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 talking about the reproduction which is the last point here so in the reproduction we can see monoecious forms as well as dioecious forms first of all sexual reproduction will be seen here sexual reproduction all right the organisms can be monoecious or dioecious beta so you have to remember that that nearis is dioecious nearis is the example of dioecious dioecious you understand unisexual 
monoecious bisexual so earthworm and leech earthworm and leech they are they are monoecious or bisexual if we talk about fertilization mostly external fertilization but in nearest so you can write internal as well as external fertilization so external fertilization is seen in earthworm and leech again okay in earthworm and leech again there will be external fertilization but in case of nearest there will be internal fertilization and beta indirect development so development also development also is indirect all right talking about the development <coughs> talking about the development you have to remember nearest if you'll remember nearest na nearest has internal fertilization and indirect development in in indirect development and internal fertilization otherwise the development is going to be direct or indirect so direct or indirect so what is the example of indirect development nearest the example of indirect development is nearest in all other uh, uh, basically in all other animals nearest as well as all other animals there will be internal fertilization and in earthworm and leech there will be external fertilization so basically you have to remember fertilization development monoecious dioecious for only three uh, only three animals earthworm leech and nearis all right so you have to remember sexual reproduction monoecious earthworm and leech dioecious nearis in nearis there will be internal fertilization and indirect development otherwise in uh, in earthworm and leech there will be external fertilization and there will be direct development all right so now examples i have already told you the examples three examples are there one is earthworm known as ferritima ferritima is earthworm one is nearis nearis is sandworm nearis is sandworm and the last one is hirudinaria hirudinaria is leech blood sucking leech so only three examples are given in this phylum so beta it is very very important to you know it is very very important okay it is very very important to understand the ncrt after understanding each and every phylum you have to understand the ncrt so it is a request please read ncrt for all of these three phylums after watching this session immediately you read the lines of ncrt and you will find everything in ncrt and just try to make quick notes of ncrt only here i have talked about ncrt and some additional points also but you have to make sure that you are remembering only ncrt points so if some other points which i have talked about and they are not given in ncrt you can just leave those points no need to learn them just you can read them but no need to learn them the important thing is to learn each and every point of ncrt your focus should be on ncrt all right so that was all about Uh, the phylum platyhelminthes askelminthes and annelida in our next session we will be talking about the next three phylums so stay tuned keep watching all right and keep understanding keep getting uh, updated and all the best thank you one and all bye bye take care god bless you all